Shut up and sit down. What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 11 of the STS Guys. I'm Jeremy. Hey, it's Larry. It's Leo. So episode 11. So we've made it to 11 episodes, our, our second episode into double digits. So some good stuff. Some good stuff. Like yeah. I said, so far, like I said, I've told, I know all you guys know the statistics. I've, I've mentioned it a couple of different times, but we are now 87% more successful than the majority of podcasts because the majority of podcasts don't make it past episode eight. So, eight, huh? That's yeah. the milestone? Th- that's the milestone. So once we passed episode eight, but so our, our chances of success went extremely up. Now that we're into episode eleven, like I said, we're 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 we're, we're golden. We're set for the road. Well, we've incrementally increased uh, just our production value. Episode four is when we got our mics. Right. You know, we got the mixer. Episode three, so we're doing pretty good. We're, we're doing good, and like I don't think we've been in danger of not podcasting either. Like, yeah. we've missed some people. Like today, uh, we don't have Scott. He's a little sick, but that's all right because yeah. Leo, me, and Jeremy all showed up. Well, then to kind of expand the the podcasting family of the STS guys. Uh, we actually have a new member that, that's going to be joining us. So, uh, Nate, do you want to come on and say hello? Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. So, welcome. It's welcome to the podcast. So, Nate, what, what, brings, what kind of knowledge do you bring to the podcast? I'm an avid toy collector. I collect comics. Um, I go to Comic-Con every year, at least I try to. Luckily, I got my tickets for 2018. Nice. Uh, but yeah, I've been a big fan of the podcast since the inaugural. I would ask Scott <laughs> if that was correct, but he's not here. But yeah, uh, I've just been a big fan since you guys started. I'm really happy to be a part of it. He's given me so much shit about that. I, every I, week. I, I can tell, I can tell oh, I that, uh, that, that, you're, that you're doing it, so you're, you're, you're good to go there. Um, so now... You have a pretty interesting hobby, though. Like I said, and I, I, I think that's one thing that um, we could we can kind of bring to the listeners here. Uh, so, what is what is a hobby? You want to kind of describe what you do? Yeah. So I've always been a big toy collector ever since I was a little kid. Uh, but recently, I'd say in the last three years, I've started doing action figure photography. So um, it's just like it sounds. You know, I, I get my my favorite figures. I create a scene and I create some shots, and then I post it on Instagram and interact with the community. Awesome. So what, what kind of got you into that to begin with? Did you like notice like someone else doing it and like, hey, you know what, that'd be really cool if I, if I did that or? Yeah, like I said, I've always been collecting and it was kind of through that that I discovered people that were doing action figure photography. And around that time, you know, I think it was, I was going through a sickness with my dad and it was just something to kind of express myself in a different way. Um, so I started doing the photography and I ended up really enjoying it and getting super into it. Oh, very cool. That's uh, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like I said, if like I said, I, I know I follow you on Instagram and like I said, I've every time like I said, you, you post a shot, like I said, it, it's, it's amazing. Like it just, the, the amount of setup that you have to like do to kind of like set up that shot to get that, that one perfect snapshot. Like it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Like I said, the, honestly, your Halloween one with uh Leatherface uh, chopping off one of the mutants heads from, uh, from, from uh, Dark Knight Returns. Right. That was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Some of those scenes can take me a long time to set up. Other times I get really lucky and I get it within a couple shots, but yeah, it's kind of a, a mixed bag sometimes. Do you use your phone or do you have a separate camera? So I primarily actually do use my phone. I've tried to convert to a DSLR. Uh, I'm just not experienced enough with it, to be honest with you. And I've, I've had a Note 5 for a long time and the, the cameras on that are really great. And I just switched up to a Note 8 and the nice. camera on that is actually really phenomenal. Yeah. Well, good news is, as, I said, as, part of wel- as part of welcoming to the podcast, now we actually have a resident uh, camera expert yeah. on board. Enter uh, Leo. Enter Leo. <laughs> Awesome. Who can definitely help you out on the, on the SLR front. So now do you, so with the, with the photography, do you like make your own custom props or like, do you, do you like actually like, like sculpt and customize stuff or like, or do you like buy prefab stuff or? Uh, I wish I was that talented. Unfortunately, I'm not. Uh, a lot of what I use is prefabricated. Um, there's a company called Extreme Sets that makes uh, these pop-up dios and it's kind of like a cardboard paper background. Uh, they're really creative because you can get doors. You get, there's one that has like a, you know, it's like a jail cell scene. Um, and then it's just props that I've acquired from different figures and other stuff along the way. No, I, I noticed, uh, like, I saw one of your, 
your uh, your your latest post. The, you have the uh, the Edward Nigma from from Gotham. I'm like, oh, I'm like, why are you so, so excited? But it wasn't necessarily the figure you were excited about. It was the <laughs> desk inside yeah. the exactly. figure that you were excited about. Yeah, it comes with a really cool desk that uh, NECA official actually uses a lot in their photos um and yeah i mean it, the hardest part is to find good props that actually match up in size with the figures you're trying to use so do you have a specific scale that you typically use or a specific lineup figure that you typically use yeah so 112 is the scale i usually go to which is six inch um and then mezco and neck are really kind of my go-to action figure lines that i collect very cool no um like i said it's 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 one of those things where i've said i've ever since like, i said you mentioned the internet i've like been addicted to, like I said, like your new photos that you put out. Like I said, every every uh, kind of scene that you set up. Like I said, and especially like I said, the themed ones, especially for the like the Halloween month. Like I said, they've been they've been awesome. So thanks a lot, uh, man. I really appreciate awesome, that. Awesome work. Yep. No, it's, I agree. Yeah, you, you take really good photos. I've always I've always thought that since you shared your Instagram with me. Um, that was one of the first things that I found on Instagram. Actually, what wasn't your toy photos, but um, when when I first signed up for my personal account, like I stumbled across like a lot of pop pictures and then the action figures, and I'm like. These are really cool. So I started posting some on my own and I ended up making a separate Instagram because I didn't want all my friends getting annoyed with my uh, pop pictures all the time. <laughs> so you, you, so the audience out there may recognize Nate's name because we've, we've, uh, we've brought his name up before on, on the podcast. I think it was episode two when we were basically saying DC was shit or <laughs> not me, not me anyways. Uh, a certain member who's not here was saying yeah. that, uh, that DC was shit uh, where I, I, I disagreed kind of. Um, but uh, I said I know you, someone jumped in the comments and, and completely disagree with that. Uh, yeah, that is uh, this gentleman sitting across from the table right now. That was me. I'm going to be the uh, token DC representative here. Like I said, it's nice to balance. It'll out bring the, out a good balance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the, the the Marvel DC. Like I said it'll it'll bring out uh, that evenly about. So right now, honestly though, D- <laughs> DC is totally taking Marvel's ass. Oh, they're stuff. killing it. Yeah, DC Metal is awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm a little behind, but from what I've read, it's really great. No, so it's it's one of those things where, like I said, it's it's a it's a everyone has a fandom, like I said, and as, as, as long as like I said, we kind of like joke about it on the podcast in regards to like you know Marvel's better, DC's better, or this side or the other. Honestly, it, I don't care who's putting out as long as it's decent quality, decent stories, great artwork. You know that's what I care about. Yeah. We live yeah. in yeah. an awesome time. Like I said, even with with the movies, like I said, I know we shit on uh, Suicide Squad and 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 Batman v Superman. It, it's in a world like so where we wouldn't typically get something like we're getting a Batman v Superman movie. Yeah. True. Well, we well, sort of yeah. shit on Defenders too, which is Marvel. So there's no True. real we're equal opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's fair point. I I wish the DC movies were up to par with Marvel cuz I really do enjoy the Marvel movies. Um for me, I loved Batman vs Superman just because it put those two together. Um you know, you guys probably read The Dark Knight Returns, but that I remember reading that and just thinking that was one of the coolest scenes because of the prep work that Batman put into it, but then seeing that actually take place on the big screen was really cool for me. Yeah, no, it, it's it's a story that I never thought we'd see on the big screen, and even though it wasn't a literal translation of you know Frank Miller's work in in, in the Dark Knight Returns, it, it was still nice to see kind of kind of a homage to that. Like I said, just mm-hmm. we may never get to see something like that again, but I said it's nice. To see that you know what there was some respect paid to the the source material yeah oh we'll get to see it again dc's making a movie for everything oh, yeah. right <laughs> just say this last yeah. week i think there were two announcements deathstroke solo movie and then what zachary levi is going to be shazam yeah zachary levi is going to be shazam but, but they are doing a shazam one then huh? the, they are the deathstroke i'm actually excited about because the, the director i honestly am, don't have his name off the top of my head, but he's the director that directed the raid movies yeah um so basically if you've ever seen any of the movies the raid um they're like these like chinese like films of where there's like drug dealers and gangsters and stuff like i said in this like hotel building like i said levels like one through ten and this one guy basically fights through like so these different levels and these fight scenes and these choreographed scenes get like more and more insane as he, as he as he climbs through each level uh of the building that he's in so it's a it's an awesome movie like i said if you have time check it out like i said the raid is is awesome so it actually has me kind of really kind of excited for a deathstroke movie yeah no i agree i i haven't seen those but that uh, premise sounds like it would make for a really good kind of superhero, specifically Deathstroke movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm all about more DC. I think it's a little interesting of a choice, though, to be honest, to choose a Shazam standalone. Um, you know, they could have focused on some of the more popular, like Cyborg. You know, the people that they're using in Justice League, they've already gone with Wonder Woman. I know they're doing Aquaman. But I think it would make more sense for me if they do Cyborg before they did Shazam. 
So we're kind of going back to, to Deathstroke. Um, do you think they're doing a Deathstroke movie kind of in comparison to Deadpool being so popular? So do you think they're going to do a rate, an R rated Deathstroke movie to kind of like play on, or kind of ride those coattails of, Hey, you can have kind of a, an R rated anti-hero type movie. Yeah. I think that's an interesting point and that's probably where they're going with it. I just, the only thing that, you know, Deadpool is such a goofball and Deathstroke's not really that way. So it will be interesting to see how they play off that character. Deathstroke is the uh, the guy in um, the Arrow series, right? Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. With the orange mask. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, Nate, like I said, nice to have you at the table. Like I said, it's nice to have you now as a member of the STS guys officially. So, welcome. I said you'll be hearing from Nate uh, from week to week along with uh, the rest of us. So, kind of, I said, it brings that, that DC edge uh, to the table. Um, now, for the rest of us, uh, what, what, was, what did everyone do this week? Um, well... Uh, I think we had a pretty good week. Uh, on Friday, Jeremy, Scott, and I headed over to the mall, like a bunch of teenage girls. <laughs> <laughs> and first stop was Hot Topic, <laughs> like a bunch of teenage girls. <laughs> uh, so Jeremy picked up. Uh, we, we had really good. We had really good luck. Uh, Jeremy picked up a Chase Dorbs. Um, what did you grab again? No, I grabbed the the Sophia Chase. Um, I'm not really a, a big Dorbs collector, but I actually got ended up getting it for my wife just because like I said the, the the chase. Like I said it's Sophia wearing a sweater that basically says, "I'm ready, take take me Hurricane 91." Yeah. Like I said from an iconic Golden Girls episode, so really di- really different. But like I said I know my wife would love it, so that's why I ended up getting that for her. Chase is the ones that Funko puts out, right? The the like those the super, limited, the super yeah, limited, yeah. one in one in six in a case, right? So you get. Uh, the store gets six pops or, or dorbs, and only one of those is that variant. Okay. Yeah. Um, as far as the Sophia goes, it's pretty rad. I, I know I watched Golden Girls when I was a kid for whatever <laughs> weird reason, um, but I actually kind of remember that episode. Um, so that was a really good find. Um, so after Hot Topic, we headed over to uh, the Disney store. Um, we got there kind of right like as... Like a couple pre-teenage girls. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah, like a third grader or something <laughs> so no so so before you get into the uh, the the disney store adventure you got to explain the opening of the disney store <laughs> man i can't even explain the opening of the you disney guys were store. that early yeah oh yeah well yeah <laughs> we planned ahead <laughs> um we we knew that both stores were going to have uh chase figures release on friday morning so uh we gave it a good shot to get there a little bit early so we could get what we wanted um, Jeremy got that Sophia. The Disney store was dropping uh, brand new Star Wars dorbs, oh, Disney okay. store exclusives. You can only get them at the Disney store. Um, they, I think there's like eight or nine, maybe even 10 different figures like Luke, Leia, C-3PO, um, but they have a Chewbacca and then there's a flock Chewbacca chase. So little furry Chewbacca dorbs that I just had to have. Um, so I got to the Disney store right before they opened. Um, me and two other people were there. Uh, and apparently, all adults. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. All, all adults. One older lady and some dude who worked at Nordstrom. Um, so I was. I ended up being second in line. Uh, apparently, every morning at the Disney store, though, they have a grand ceremony to open up the Disney store. Oh, um, it's like the Walmart hoorah, huh? I, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, wait till you hear this yeah. in a league of its own. It's. It was. It was unexpected. What so, is Disney? Exactly, right? It's the Disney magic opening up the Disney store every morning in the mall. Um, So the two worker ladies come out um, in their Disney garb, try to get the crowd riled up. Again, (laughs) three adults. Three adults. Um, Try to get us to, right? They're like, they got a lock out in front of the store, like a... Uh, just a plastic lock on a stand and a couple ropes to keep you out, right? Like, you, God forbid you go into the store before they, they do their grand opening ceremony. But anyhow, they, uh, they, they make you call Tinkerbell. Um, so, again, three adults standing outside the <laughs> Disney store yelling, Tinkerbell! That way Tinkerbell could come, bring the key so we can open up the lock and buy my damn dolls. <laughs> so All I'm saying is, where is the video recording of this? Um, so... Key point. So we are going to get this on video yeah. because we want to see if they still do it when no one's there. So we want to <laughs> hide behind the corner and see basically them doing this magical opening ceremony to see if people, they actually still do it when no one's in line whatsoever. If they don't, you know they have to hate their job. Every time they look out and they see somebody standing there like, 
damn it. Now, I gotta go out there and do this. Now, Tinkerbell now Leo, thing. I know you're a huge Disney fan. Oh, I did, love me some Disney. Did you know that they did that? I had no idea. <laughs> it you, makes you now want to see this, don't so, you? So, yes. Not only do I want to see this at the Chandler Mall, but I actually want to go to Disneyland and watch them open it because it's got to be fireworks and real Tinkerbell showing up to open up the park at this point. Because if they're doing this for the store, I can't imagine right? what they're doing at the park. Yeah, I've never been to Disneyland when they open either. It's probably it's probably less. It's probably <laughs> nothing. It's just come on and get yeah. it. You paid you, all this money. Yeah, you paid all this money. Just get in here. Yeah. So it took a good five minutes for them to open up the store. They opened it up. Um, the other lady told me she was going for Chewbacca. Um, apparently, they were releasing some die-cast metal Chewbacca that day, too. So score on me because they only got one of the Chase Dorbs. Um, so I was able to grab that before Nordstrom guy uh, tried to snipe it from behind. <laughs> Nordstrom um, guy. <laughs> oh, he was so pissed. He wasn't very happy. Well, yeah, he had to call Tinkerbell and he walked out with nothing. <laughs> I'd be pissed too. A- was- Absolutely. So it- I grabbed uh, I grabbed the, the flock Chewy and I went ahead and uh, grabbed Darth Vader too. Um, they're really nice dorbs, so I, I'm kind of excited. I'm doing everything in my power not to buy the whole set. Um, I'm happy with my two for right now. No, so that was... It was... Well, the opening ceremony, let's, let's put it this way. The opening ceremony, that says it enough. Yeah, right? <laughs> so me and Scott were at Hot Topic, yeah. went in, found my what I wanted, made my purchase, walked all the way to the Disney store, which is on the opposite side of the mall of where yeah. the Hot Topic is, and Larry still wasn't in the door yet. <laughs> right? I was. I barely had uh, grabbed the doors by the time they caught up to me. Oh, and the wonderful part, part is uh, they, they turn off the lights, too. Um, so, so you can see Tinkerbell. So yeah, so you can see Tinkerbell. Right, there's like a... Okay, so I have questions now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I left off that part. So there's a, I don't know, like some type of video thing playing on this white pillar, like on the, that's oh, part of the fixtures. Okay. So you can kind of see like an animated Tinkerbell from, uh, from that Peter Pan movie playing on there so that you're allegedly calling. So they have the lights off this allegedly. whole time. Allegedly. Right, so they, they you, let us in. So you, all the people that are underneath 10, you just killed their hopes and dreams of the thinking Tinkerbell was real. Oh, allegedly, we have no proof. Oh, okay, allegedly, allegedly yes. Yeah. Somebody got brought that key, I, I don't know who. Um, so I, I'm sitting there searching in the dark for this Chase Dorbs, which looks exactly like the regular one, except for he's a little furry. My old eyes weren't doing me so good. <laughs> and I, I'll admit, uh, the gentleman from Nordstrom actually said, hey, you have that in your hand. And I'm like, oh shit, it is the chase. <laughs> because I literally couldn't see because I was in the dark. So I kind of just held my ground and boxed him out a little bit till they turned the lights on to make sure there wasn't another one. Because I know Jeremy wanted one. And by that time, he was right behind me anyhow. But uh, nope, just one chase, Dorbs. None for Nordstrom guy. Score me. Double chase Friday. It was amazing. It was, it was a pretty amazing day. Um, I, then... I feel like your chase luck kind of continued throughout the weekend, though, right, Jeremy? It, it, it did. Um, so um, uh, there was a Halloween Comic Fest. Um, like I said, there was, like I said, the, uh, the, I think it was a, kind of a national thing among all a, like comic book stores. A national thing that wasn't advertised very well at all. No. Did you know about it, Nate? I did not. Yeah. No. So apparently, like I said, there was this thing called Comic this Halloween Comic Fest. Like a second uh, free comic book day, but in the fall. Yeah, in the fall. Um, they had an exclusive uh, Emma Frost figure, and so I'm like, okay, you know what? Me and my wife, we had went to dinner, and I said we were actually about by Metro Center at Papa Do's, and then we're like, hey, you know what? Then she's like, hey, you know, what? let me call to see if they actually have that figure. I'm like, so because I told her, I'm like, oh man, I wish I would have, you know, went earlier in the day because I, yeah. I told I totally forgot that it was that it was uh, the Comic Fest day, and so she called down there, and they had one left. And then, she, then she's like, hey, can you put it on hold for me? Oh, yeah, sure. We'll put oh, it on hold. Awesome. Yeah, because we have, like, DJs and this, that, and the other. So I go to Drawn to Comics. So I haven't, I haven't even told you guys no. this yet. So I go to Drawn to Comics. It is bumping. Like I said, really? there's, like, there's, there's turntables spinning upstairs. There's people in costumes. There's people buying comics <laughs> everywhere. Like, it was, it was nuts. Um, but got there, made my one single purchase. And left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but then, like, so this is, like, then at that point in time, because they were... They were going to be closing after hours that day because normally they close at eight, uh, but they were going to be closing at nine thirty because of the comic fest. Cool. So we got there like eight thirty, I want to say. Uh, so I ended up getting that, and then I'm like, "Hey, you want? Know we're not about. Let's go run the rest of our errands for the night." And so my wife, she had gotten um, like one of those like cricket vinyl machines, and so she needed some some different things for that. So she wants to start making some like wine glasses and some and some shirts and stuff like that. STS guy shirts coming soon. Um, so uh, so we went and ran into Michael's. So apparently uh, a, a new venue, because I saw, like I said, on the Funko blog that they were having a Michael's exclusive oh, yeah. coming soon. Uh, for DC Bombshells. Yeah, for, for DC Bombshells. I'm like, I thought that was like, the weirdest thing possible. Yeah. 
but apparently Michael's carries pops. Yeah, I, I've, what? I, I've actually seen them there before. Yeah. Um, they had they had a couple for Finding Dory, and some people were finding the uh, chase for Despicable Me. Um, so I actually went to Michael's not too long ago, and they had a ton of Despicable Me pops, except for that chase guru. Yeah, I I haven't been into a Michael's in probably a good. 10 years, uh, <laughs> just because I said, well, the advent of Hobby Lobby and Joann's and everything yeah. else like that, where, you know, buying stuff online, I'm like, I haven't really had a need to go to Michael's, but we went to Michael's, we're looking through the pops, found a, another Chase Porg. Awesome. Um, wow. that, so you have three now then? Um, two, because I gave one. Yeah. Oh, you gave one. Uh, we collectively have three. So now. we collectively have three, um, but I said the next one... I'm not going to flip it. I'm not going to sell it or anything else like that. It's probably honestly going to be uh, a future giveaway on the channel. So just so, just so that way everyone knows that. I think half the fun with the pops is like finding them. Like, I mean, you have your staples, right? Barnes and Noble, yeah. Hot Topic, Disney Store. Now Michaels. Now Michaels. You know, it's almost America's like Scott, Scott, made store. A, Scott made a comment, what, a few weeks ago about it being in Kohl's. Like nobody yeah. shops at Kohl's. But yeah. I think that's part of the fun is like you're going all over town looking at these weird stores you don't really go into and there they are yeah it's got to be great for the economy right <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean nowadays pops are so large it's almost surprising when you don't find them in a store because they've got such a huge following now so i saw um earlier this week that people actually found that pork chase at the fedex store the FedEx store yeah, has Yeah, you know how like FedEx has their UPS store where you can ship stuff, yeah, the buy fake envelopes. Kinkos. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 exactly. It used to be Kinkos, the fake Kinkos. Somebody found a pork chase there too. No way. That is Wow, that is most random. Random thing. That ever. is random. Um so then there's a, there's another chase. It's actually sitting in my, my living room right now. Uh yeah. in, in in a box of I wanted that Hellboy chase that came out, so I said Funko started doing the line of uh comics missing. So they have like the they have like the, the Marvel the Marvel line. They have uh, DC's line. It isn't called DC. It's called uh, uh, Heroes. Funko Heroes, yeah. And so now they started doing an actual like comic, uh, basically a comic character one. Yeah. Um, so the very first kind of launch of that was with Hellboy, and I love Hellboy. I love like I said the original like Mike Mignola. Like I said when he like I said that, that, that original book and Hellboy is there. Like it's just it's great, great. Like I said I love. I'm a huge, huge Hellboy fan. Super excited for the. The new movie with David Harbour coming into it. Right. We'll talk some more about that later. Um, but we, I ended up getting, I said, an entire case of the Hellboy pops just because I wanted to guarantee myself that chase because the chase for that one is freaking sweet. It's Hellboy with his horns. Right on. Oh, that's cool. Yep. So you should have one chase and five commons. So I have one chase, five commons. So basically, I'll keep one of the commons. I'll keep the chase. Then I have uh, four spare ones, which I don't know what to do with. Hmm, potential giveaway coming soon um, on some of our different channels, maybe. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see what I want to do with those. So you bought a case. Then. I, I bought a case of... I didn't know you could do that. You technically can't. <laughs> well, that's how uh, bad he wanted that chase. That, that's how bad I wanted that chase. Um, so I found a... You basically guaranteed your way of... No, I found a killer deal from a toy, air quote, store on, on eBay that basically sells the cases Pops. yeah gotcha. well it's kind of like the marvel legends too if there's like one marvel legends character that you want that's harder mm -hmm. to find than the rest then it's best just to buy a case and yeah. then sell the others yeah so that's that's kind of what I, my imagine with that and the way that chase was going on on ebay it was like when it originally like dropped it was like being like, like about 40 bucks just for the chase alone and so i wanted the common too and so literally i could buy the entire case for eight dollars more yeah so i'm like you might it, as well. It's a pretty good deal. Um, that's kind of become a thing. Like the prices vary, but um, these stores, you know, that are Funko distributors will just sell you uh, a whole case because it's easier for them, yeah. right? You, they know you want the chase. They know that they can't move those commons because all the common pops uh, aren't worth anything if they have a chase because everybody buys up, um, right? Everybody goes to Hot Topic and buys ten of them or whatever, hoping to get a couple chases, and then they just can't do anything with the with the extra commons. And that's the thing, if you're an avid collector, you're going to do what's necessary to get what you want. Yeah. You know, either you're going to go to the store really early or you're going to buy an entire case to get the one that you want. Yeah. Well, like I said, it, well, speaking of, it's, it's the avid collector. Like I said, uh, and I said this was uh, Nate's first time over at my house today. So like I said, when he walked in the uh, the office there, 
I think he he saw that I was an avid collector of pops. <laughs> he saw the magic. <laughs> yeah, very impressive collection though. <laughs> Um, so we were talking before about how having the podcast, we, we can we can kind of relate our life events based on what episode of the podcast was going on. Uh, well, I remember episode one when Jeremy's pop display was a little bit smaller than it is now. Yeah. So just in the last like eight or nine weeks, it's grown immensely. It, it keeps well, they keep on dropping like keep cool on shit dropping. every well, day. Well, that and our every week update is well, we were at the mall or we were yeah. we were going. Yeah, we plus were at the you store. just had New York Comic Con. Exactly. So. Yeah, but well, it's never ending, man. It's never ending. Well, except honestly, next week I'll have. Oh yeah, I got these exclusive from you know, Stanley's Kamikaze yeah. or because those uh, sorry, are LA Comic Con because yeah. they don't call it Kamikaze because those drop at Hot Topic on uh, on Monday. Yeah, or online tonight. It doesn't um, stop. Yeah, it just doesn't stop. And like I said I'll end up picking all four of those up just because. One of them's a Kevin Smith, and I have to have my Kevin Smith pops. Uh, one of them's uh, a Moon Knight, which I, I'm a huge Moon Knight fan, which is really Marvel's answer to Batman, basically. Same thing, except he's just insane. Um, and then I think they have a flocked snowball from right. Rick and Morty, and then... The Ashoka from Star Wars Rebels? Am I pronouncing that right? Ashoka, yeah, the, yeah, the hologram. The glow in the dark. The glow in the dark hologram. Uh, uh, Ashoka or Hosa. Ho- 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 yeah, I don't know. Whatever. The girl from Rebels. Close enough. Yeah, so I know something was interesting this week that kind of just happens to, to go along with our episode number. Wait, you mean episode 11? Episode 11. So, hmm, what is... Let's go 11, 11. Oh, yeah, Stranger Things. Um, Stranger Things uh, Season 2 uh, dropped on Friday. So have you guys watched it? No, I am. I haven't even watched the first episode. Uh, or oh, first yeah. season, I mean. Oh. All right, so, Leo, you have homework. <laughs> no, yes, yeah. hard pass. <laughs> um, I'm like, no, if you need, a, like I said, I know you, you, you watch shows with your sister. You need to have, like, dinner time shows and stuff like that. This is a good show. This is, like I said, this is a good show to get into. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a, I said, it's super lighthearted. It kind of like said, it reminds you of like said those like, you know, like watching like the Goonies when you're younger or watching like, you know, any of those like eighties type of like movies. Yeah. Like it's very, very nostalgic. Like I said, I, I've watched the first season twice. First season, the first time I watched it, I'm like, eh, I'm like, I didn't see what the hype about. Second time I watched it, I had a little, little bit better appreciation for it. Yeah. Um, like yeah, I said, see, I think that's my hang up is I don't really get the fad behind it. Not yeah. quite yet, anyway. Yes. So, I haven't even seen a trailer for it. Maybe if I saw a trailer, it might open up my mind a little bit. Yeah, I haven't watched season two, but I watched season one. And it's like you're saying, if, if you're a child of the 80s, there's just so many things that you can appreciate from that show. The intro music, a lot of the references that they use, you know, just what it's like to be a kid back then. It, it just has so many awesome, nostalgic vibes to it. So I, I was thinking when I was watching season two, right? Um, so Nate hasn't watched any yet of season two. Um, I made it through episode four. So I'm about halfway done. Jeremy finished it, right? Uh, But when I was watching the first part of season four, I was kind of thinking like a a big appeal of Stranger Things is that 80s setting. Um, I was just thinking like, do you guys think it would be as popular if it was like modern day? No. And and here's the thing. So I know I I mentioned before uh, the podcast that they did kind of like a talking dead type thing with Stranger Things. So I watched a couple episodes of that. And so the Duffer Brothers are on there, and they're actually specifically talking about why it's it's kind of fun to set it in the '80s. It's just because the the access to information isn't as readily available, right. so it makes yeah. it, right. it they they can do so so many more things to it. So like so that's why they use the walkie talkies because hey they can make them work and they can not make them work just because of you know just because so you can't just flip up you know you can't just call someone on the phone. Yeah. Um, you or, can't you can't take a selfie with the demogorgon. You can't yeah you can't you can't take a selfie with the demogorgon or you can't you know like you actually have to go to a library if you want to yeah. basically look at you know you know research yeah. something specific. And you can only check out five books. And you can only check out five <laughs> books at a time. Well, yeah, even the the scene where they're in the arcade, you know, you don't we don't have really arcades like that no. anymore. And, and that that right there was like I said an iconic scene. It was it was it was a change, and so I'm glad, I I thought this is what they were doing, and they specifically mentioned it. Uh, in that Talking Dead type of show, like I said, I think it's called Beyond Stranger Things, is that, so you don't see them play, you know, D&D anymore. So basically, they've uh, gotten older. Yeah. So they basically, they've gone from tabletop gaming and, and yeah. hanging all out of that, to now, hey, you know what, the, the number one thing to do is to go hang out at the arcade. Yep. They're go, they're getting older, they're, they're making that transition to the arcade. We're playing Dragon Slayer, we're playing Dig Dug, yeah. It, I really like the the arcade scene so far. It's it's shown up a couple times. Yeah, no, that, it's 
Well, so they did a behind the scenes with that too, and oh, cool. the thing. So it was like this complete dumpy, rundown building, yeah. um, to where then they completely refurbished it, and they actually made. Um, they burn all the games, and then, like I said, I guess ninety percent of the games actually worked. I was going to so, ask if they were just uh, set dressing yeah, or if they were real. Yeah, they, they, they were actually real games. Where, where, like I said the, the cast would actually go in there and right. actually play them on, on breaks and stuff. That's awesome. So okay, so spoiler alert. Um, talking now, at least through episode four. I won't. I don't. Uh, I don't care. They uh, did anybody care at the table? No. Okay. I don't care. I'm like a year out from watching, uh, it, so <laughs> I'll forget the spoiler. All right. So. I really like the season. I said normally, second seasons of things, and I'm like, yeah, they're they're good, but they're not necessarily as good as, as their their inaugural season, Scott. Um, uh, we're looking at you, the good place. Yeah. Um, so they're not normally a, a, as good the, the in the second season. This, I think, it's better in the second season. Uh, one, you can tell they have buttloads of cash <laughs> um, compared to season one. They have cash to spend. Yep. There are so many licensed things and you know copyrighted songs. That there, it's throughout the entire season. Well, I bet you Netflix just wasn't sure if this would take off the first season, and now that it has, in the way that it has, and it's made so yeah, much money. They're, then, they're yeah. dropping that, or they're increasing the budget yeah. for it for sure. Well, like, like Jeremy said, like I'm just a couple episodes in, and they probably already have enough songs. Uh, to fill a soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just right there. And they're all good songs. Yeah, it's like, it's straight up like Guardians of the Galaxy 1 good soundtrack. Yeah, that is a good soundtrack. So if it's not on <laughs> iTunes yet, I'm sure it's going to be up in number one by the end of the week. Yeah, it's 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 nuts. Like, like I said, all the licensed songs they have. Like I said, you have, in the very early episodes, I said you have the kids dressed up actually as Ghostbusters. Yeah. Not like, hey, they're dressed up, you know, as like pirates or they're dressed up as some non-licensed character. As busters of ghosts. They're dressed yeah. up as ghost, yeah, Ghostbusters. They're, they're riding their bike, singing the song. Like, yeah. it's, it's legit Ghostbusters approved. Yeah, plus you get these people that grew up during this time. You know, now they're all adults. They're getting their kids involved into it. So it's, you know, it's kind of like a, a cycle where, hey, this is what it was like to be a kid when I was your age. And now you can watch it with me no. and we can share it together. That, that's exactly what it is. My kid won't watch it. He's afraid. He was downstairs when we were watching uh, the end of season one because we rewatched season one before we started season two. So we finished that up on Friday. Uh, I caught him peeking out from underneath his blanket while he was playing video games a couple times to look at the Demogorgon. Um, and like that final scene when Eleven's fighting uh, the Demogorgon in the school. But uh, no, he, he likes the Ghostbusters, but he's going to stay far, far away from Stranger Things. Yeah, no, it's, 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 got, it's got that mix. It's got that mix of like kind of like 80s horror. It's got that mix of yeah. 80s sci-fi. It's got that mix of 80s. Like, 80s adventure. Yeah, 80s adventure. Um, honestly, like I said, the things that I, I automatically saw when I'm watching the second season, I saw, you know, like the horror movies, like, you know, like watching like the old like, Friday the 13th. And there I saw like, you know, homages to that. I saw homages to Ghostbusters. I saw homages to like adventures and babysitting, like just especially when some of the characters get together. Um, then they like said you have the introduction of, of new characters, and then so there's there's a new uh, female interest. Uh, I would say love interest in yeah. in in the group now for Lucas and uh, the kid with the hat, Dustin. Dustin, Dustin yeah. yeah. So so Lucas and Dustin. I like said they have new, uh, Max, Max or yeah. Maxine. Um, so. This was an interesting thing for me, and so like I said, this is this is not spoilerly, but it's something that I had me guessing the entire time because, like I said, she shows up out of nowhere. She has like this older brother type figure, yeah. which but it, he says the little girl's not his sister. Yeah, I mean, at some point, like they're like, well, we got to stick together because we're family now. Okay. That's where I'm at. I don't know what happens after that. Yeah. So okay. So I'm I don't care. I'm no. gonna, okay. Um. So I thought, okay, maybe she's part of the program, or he's part yeah. of the program, or you know, they were like, yeah, they both have. No, it's literally a combined household. Basically, uh -huh. them addressing divorce. Their parents got divorced. The the older kid was the the mom's kid. The the yeah. younger kid was the dad's kid. Yeah. And basically, they're now a Brady Bunch family because they ha they're basically stepbrother and stepsister, and that's it. No. It's so weird because they, like, they focus on that so much. Yeah, it's just uh, trying to get your attention. Yeah, it's away. a total. It's a it's total. A tease. It's a total misdirect from yeah, everything else. Right. And then, like I said, the older brother. It literally it gives me that homage to uh, like Lost Boys of being like, hey, you know what the. The badass '80s kid, badass greasy yeah. '80s kid, yeah. '80s kid, you know, with jean jackets, yeah. you know, and the tight jeans, and like the one earring. Yeah. 
like looks like you know what's his face from Poison. Like it's, it's like it's total total badass. But like I said, it just it's an interesting homage to like I said uh, just that '80s type of like bully type character. Um, so I think the, some of the biggest misdirects in this were like so in the trailer you saw like I said the shadow figure, yeah. you know the shadow monster, the, yeah. the shadow monster, the overarching hey this is this is the thing. Um, so is that the antagonist of the show? Potentially, um, but it's it's not. <laughs> so it's basically they they cast almost like the the uh, the upside down as almost an entire living being, and so that shadow yeah. monster is, is is a representation of that. Um, so I forgot what episode they're in. It has in episode is what episode are you usually episode I four? finished for. <laughs> so has the shadow monster invaded Will yet? Yes. Yeah, okay. So. Yeah. So, I feel like ep- end of episode four is kind of the climax where everything's built up. Um, yeah, Will's going through his stuff. Um, the girl and Steve have broken up. She's with Jonathan, kind of, but not really. Um, Lucas has pissed off his new pseudo girlfriend, Max. Like, they're all not talking right. It's kind of like the whole world is falling apart and just shifting, and then it's getting ready to go through and finish uh, and up. And has Dustin found his little friend yet? Oh, uh, yeah. D- yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Episode four ends with. Dustin's little friend, the baby Demogorgon. Spoilers, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, that part was awesome. Yeah, so Dustin, he finds this little, like, it almost looks like a salamander. Yeah, they called it a, like, they fir- the first the kids thought it was a polywog, right? It's kind of a reptile-ish kind of tadpole kind of thing with some legs. I mean, they're stupid, though, right? Like, everybody who's watching this has to be clear, like, that's from the Upside Down. Like, yeah. what are you kids doing? Like, get get rid of that thing. But no, they take it to school. They're playing with it. Like, <laughs> oh, this thing's awesome. I just invented a new species. No, you didn't, dumbass. Like, it's from, <laughs> this is like a monster, man. Come on, what are you doing? Yeah, it, I've never seen this creature before. Discover a new yeah. species. And of all places, at, in your garbage can, that's where you're going to discover like, a, a, a brand new species at. Yeah. And, and their first thought is to take it to school. Their yeah. first thought is to take it to school and show Mr. Clark. So then, like I said, as as it goes on, I said it begins to change. Um, so basically, there's there's one scene where it basically it molts its skin and then it grows bigger. Like, oh, okay. So it, automatically, as the audience, you know where this is going. So you, you must feel like yelling at your TV, saying, like, hey, <laughs> "You stupid kids! Right, like, yeah. like you know you don't know what you're fucking with." Like I said, it, it's gonna it's gonna come back and bite you in the ass, and it starts to molt again, and then like I said, it turns into um, this, because I'm, I'm gonna stop saying spoiler alert because like I said, this is this is all it turns into this demogorgon type dog thing before it becomes the full on demogorgon. Hmm. Um, so they call them demodogs. So basically, oh, it's like the, it's like a dog, but with like the demogorgon face the where head, it basically, yeah. or basically, he's, he's just down up. on four legs, he's rather down than human legs. Yeah. yeah, so Dustin finds it because like I said, he keeps it in this little aquarium on, on his desk, and then so <laughs> the way he finds it is awesome because. He walks in, he's like looking at, he lifts up the sheet and he notices the glass is all broken on the aquarium and then he can't find it anywhere. And then there's this trail of blood where it ate his mom's cat. (laughs) Um, So it's basically chowing down on the mom's cat. The mom is out there like searching for the cat and then Dustin distracts her. He's like, oh yeah, you know, calls the neighbors like in the, it's like the busy signal. So, oh yeah, the cat was spotted over on the other side of town. You better go see it, mom. (laughs) So they go and try to find the cat while he basically tries to wrangle uh, I said the, the demi dog, um, but then that spawns off into. There's not just one. There's mm. multiple uh, of these demi dogs that have been kind of like brewing in the in the Hawkins lab, and they kind of basically brings into where they like I said the upside down has basically kind of leached its way through the soil. So like you had all like the, the pumpkins and stuff like right, throughout yeah. the, the episode. That basically has leached its way into these tunnels underneath the entire town of Hawkins, of where basically these creatures are basically looking and kind of burrowing through uh, the entire town of Hawkins. Um, awesome said finale. Uh, you have, like I said, the only thing that I wish would have happened sooner, um, because it, it feels like it doesn't give you the justification, is when, oh, uh, what's his name? Not Will. Uh, uh, Mike. Mike. So, so when Mike, uh, basically, because he has that infatuation with Eleven, yeah, um, they actually don't reconnect until I think the second to the last, or maybe even the, last, the second to the last episode. Um, so like, he doesn't know that 
basically Eleven is back until the right. second to last episode. And they don't really even really get much screen time together other than a quick introduction and then they both go off to do their own separate missions at that right. point in time. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at too, is uh, Hopper and Eleven fought because Eleven tried to take off to find Mike and then he finds she finds Mike, but it didn't go so well because uh, Mike was hanging out with the new girl. Um, so Eleven was a little sad, but um, yeah, like it's really good so far. Um, I really like Hopper. Uh, I like Levin. Like all the good characters are back. The new characters are okay. Um, Joyce is really good. Winona Ryder does a great job on that. Um, how'd you feel about uh, Sean Austin? Aston? What's Bob. Yeah, Bob. Bob from Radio Shack. <laughs> yeah, Bob from Radio Shack. Bob. Radio Shack. Uh, so right, very eighties. Um, the mom's boyfriend works at Radio Shack. Uh, so honestly, the, the reason why I love Bob so much is because they write a couple lines for his character that specifically reference like Goonies type like stuff. Oh, cool. Like, so for example, there's this there's this part uh, in the in the latter part of the episodes where Will basically draws like this map and he's drawing and they basically yeah. create this map across of all these tunnels and that's basically the map of the tunnel system yeah. uh, throughout all of Hawkins and. They bring in Bob to basically try to find, like I said, this this entry point of where uh, Hopper was, and right. so basically one of his like one of his lines was, "Hey, this is the kind of things you find on treasure maps and stuff <laughs> like that." And it's just it's such a subtle uh, such a subtle like slip yeah, in, yeah. but like I said, you knowing who Sean Austin is just makes you it makes you laugh. Exactly, any character could have said that, but it's it's good because it was him. Yeah. All right, that's redeeming because right now he hasn't done much other than he's like the vampire with like trailer park teeth at, at, at the Halloween episode. Yeah. Like, he didn't do much for me. That and then he gives Will the worst advice in the entire world. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. um, to where basically he basically causes Will to like confront the shadow, the shadow right. monster. And that was like the worst thing that Will could have done. Right. Because when I was a bully in high school, you know, the, or no, when I was bullied in high school, you know, they bullied me and bullied me until I stood up to them, and then I stopped. So when something's bothering you, you got to stand up for yourself, Will. Um, yeah, so that, that was, didn't go well. That was completely horrible advice. Yeah. Uh, so Bob Bob has lots of redeeming qualities throughout the entire season. Um, like, automatically, Bob's some master computer hacker, too. <laughs> so basically, he can crack uh, into, like, Hawkins lab and he's like opening closing stores and hacking into the system so he's not just Bob from Radio Shack he's also Bob the computer hacker nice um, that's how he got hooked up with Joyce Byers because in high school she would never talk to him but now they eat lunch in a park yeah and make out in the closet in the of where Joyce works <laughs> looking for a green pumpkin which they found yeah that was so weird that was a little weird that's, that's where I'm at I'm like I don't really like this guy but he 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 gets better, like I said, just because it is Sean Austin, and then it, it's just, it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, you have a character from that played probably one of the most iconic characters from an '80s movie. I'm like, how are you going to use this character? I said, and just the couple lines they give him in the future, like I said, it sells it for me. I'm like, okay, done. That, that that's what it is. Awesome. So I just thought of one other thing that you have to spoil for me. What is up with that intro scene to the very first episode okay. and eight? So that one drove me nuts because I was like six episodes in and I still did. I'm like, what did that have to do with anything? Um, so there's an episode, I think it's episode six or seven. I think it's, oh, I think it's episode six. No, seven. Seven. Uh, where. Are you sure? Maybe six. It may be six. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, it's, no, no, no. Seven. It's, it's, it's one of those two. Uh, there's a very Eleven centric episode where it's basically the entire episode's about Eleven. Okay. Um, Eleven finds her family home. Uh, oh, she right. finds her mom. Right. Yeah. Uh, her mom basically had like all this electroshock therapy and different things. Because right. in season one, she was borderline vegetable, yeah. like just watching TV. And yeah. Stuff. And so yeah. same thing in, in this one. So she found she basically finds what out happened to her mom. And she finds basically, and she has the flashbacks of like all these like children in the program. Oh, so she okay. heads out on kind of on her own to go and find this other person that she was hanging out with to see if this other person can give her any type of answers, which was eight. Awesome. Um, eight is basically in this like punk gang and then opens up kind of the gang to 11, where 11 becomes like 
Punk 11. Nice. <laughs> oh my god, so, I, want, I want that pop so much, and I don't even know what she looks like. So they be, they better have... Ah, uh, yes. They better have, like I said, a Punk 11 pop or something else, because she, it's straight up, like, black clothes, like, eye makeup, like... It's yeah. it's Punk Eleven. It's awesome. It looks like she went and raided Hot Topic. Right. Yes. Hot Topic existed in the eighties. <laughs> oh on my a Friday. god! Yes, and, and and his it is dressed as a punk. So, um, then um, David Mudine, um, basically Papa comes back. Oh, okay. so and it's something that I don't know if it's Wait, he's still alive back. Well, and that's the thing. So it's it doesn't show it as a flashback. Yeah. It just kind of comes, so you don't know if it's actually real or not. Right, but a lot and, of the stuff with the mom is flashbacks yeah. too, so, and so it's a little misleading. So the so 8 is basically there, and then this is Papa comes in, and then they have like, a, a, a dialogue, and then he basically gives her advice in regards to like, hey, you know what, to really use your powers, focus on something that upsets you, and so then that's how you can really focus your powers, which then comes into the end of when Eleven's trying to close the gate between the upside down and the normal world, where she basically is using not instead of you know her one hand of you know psionic power, now she's got two hands of psionic Ooh, power, double power, uh, double psionic power uh, to try to close the gate, and she's harnessing that that traumatic event, so basically getting ripped away from her mom to try to you know okay. you know strengthen her powers. Yeah, her loneliness and all her mommy issues. So Leo. Um, does this make you want to watch the show now? Kind of. It's yeah, I mean, pretty good, man. It right. actually sounds really fascinating, especially with the 80s nostalgia. Like, as yeah. you guys were talking about Bill or Bob, Bob, Bob. I'm over here looking yeah. for the end of Wikipedia at uh, Radio Shack's article, and apparently they still have a website. They still sell stuff. Nice. And they have, like, 420 franchise locations around, around the country. Oh. I mean, they themselves are done. They're closed. Their, their headquarters are closed. So, anyway... Um, yeah, I'm over here looking for the end of Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, there's like so there's there's a, a lot of like nods to like 80s and solid like so for example it's the, there's the Radio Shack thing because Radio Shack is a big thing. Yeah. Um, in in, in the show, uh, you see uh, Will's brother come home with videos from Blockbuster. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, Blockbuster. So, like so that was so that was, that was an awesome thing. Uh, like I said, the arcade. It's a lot of 80s type things. Just kind of come to come to play. I will say you guys aren't the only ones to tell me that I should watch it. I have a, a few other folks that have. I, in fact, they watched it Friday, and I was getting texts all day yeah. yesterday. Is you need to see this? You need to watch it. Blah, blah blah. I think my sister's actually seen the first episode, so I might have to fly this one solo. But um, yeah, you've definitely piqued my interest, dude. The, the hype is real. Um, one of the first things Jeremy and I talked about when we when we first met was how much we both thought Stranger Things was way overhyped. Uh, but rewatching season one just now, um, and now jumping into season two, like the hype's real. It's it's legit. It's a really really good show. Um, I watched season one, like I, we looked it up. It dropped like mid July last year. I, I know I started it like that first weekend because I saw a couple people on Twitter saying, "Oh my God, this is awesome!" It's kind of like Goonies, '80s flash, like blah blah blah. Check it out. And I'm like, "All right, as people are respected, so I, I jumped into this brand new show, um, and it was really good. From there, like the hype grew to insane." levels and everybody like everybody went crazy for the pops and, and all that stuff but man it's 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 a legit good show my wife liked it um right that she made me wait to watch season two with her so <laughs> that's why i'm only on episode four that's why i haven't started it yet see right <laughs> everybody likes it it's if you haven't seen it it's it's a quick watch too because they're like 45 minute episodes i think there's eight or nine in season one and two so you can knock it out in, in a week or two if you with, without even trying well jeremy you knocked it out in a day then huh uh two season days two, two so days. so i basically i watched yeah. half of it on Friday and then the other half on Saturday. Like a good 32 hours. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly over yeah. a day. Hats off to you, sir. That's impressive. <laughs> so, well, I have no kids. I have no life. My life is is here. So, um, like I said, I, ha I have dogs. Aw, your life is the podcast. <laughs> My life is the podcast. Like I said, I, said, I love the podcast. I, I lives said, and breathes STS guys. I live and breathe the STS guys. Like I said, this was... This was, like I said, this was a journey that I, like I said, tried to get off the ground many times because I've, I've always wanted to do this. And so it's nice to have a sort of group of people, you know, that share, like I said, similar interests and bring different perspectives and different things like that. It's just, it's one of those things where I've wanted to do something like this for the longest time. And it's nice to see that, one, it's getting off the ground. It's getting more and more successful. And it's one of those things where, like I said, it's a great way to just like, you know, 
not, I don't want to say forced myself to hang out with people, but it's a great way to basically, you know, you have a normal cadence for hanging out yeah. with, you know, well, your friends. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's an interesting point. Like I've, I've been a nerd my whole life and it's hard to find people that share a similar passion. Some people just don't understand it. That's why the action figure photography thing for me has sort of always been a guilty pleasure because I, I'm scared to share it with people because there's some people that hear about it are like, what are you talking about? You take pictures of action figures yeah and I then there's other people that are like yeah that's really awesome and then you find those people and you get a community and you can share similar ideas and similar thoughts about things and just having a place to talk about it, i think is awesome uh, i remember we were at phoenix comic-con together um working a booth and i think you're posting pictures on instagram and i'm like dude what's your instagram i'm gonna follow you and you're like uh, it's like got a lot of toy pictures and <laughs> i could tell you're like i don't really want you to see this but um, I think you've gotten to know me better since then. At that point, like, we already had plans to go to San Diego for Comic-Con. I'm like, dude, we're going to San Diego together. Like, it doesn't matter what you have on there. <laughs> yeah. And your toy pictures are awesome. It's not like they're shitty and, like, bad quality or something. You have something to be proud of. And if people don't like you for it, whatever. Screw them. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. That's why most of the office doesn't know about my Instagram account. Because I only share with people that I think are really going to understand what I'm trying to do. Yeah. No, no well, honestly, you're, you're now, I said, not only that, I said, are you among people I said, who appreciate that? But now I said you have, you know, all of our subscriber base that like I said that that's what they're into. Like I said they're they're into I said the, the type of stuff that we're into. Like I said they said they, they listen because like I said they're 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 actually truly you know they're they're truly interested in, in what we one what we have to say what we have to offer. Like so that's why I so we tried to communicate you know with everyone on on multiple different platforms and things like that. Like so for example, like I said I just I just want to say you know give a give a huge shout out to you know one our our YouTube community. Um, we put a challenge out there to, to get the to 200 subscribers. I said a couple weeks ago. You know, I, I actually just looked right now. Um, we're at 160. Um, we're at oh, 100. We're at two in 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so we're 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 at 160 subscribers. So 160 people out there. Like I said, really care about basically the content that we're, that we're posting. Like I said, I honestly have had a blast interacting with basically with everyone on YouTube, everyone on our different social media platforms, on our Instagram and our Facebook. Like I said, it's because like I said, it's that community that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's, it's awesome to interact with people, find people with similar interests, you know, and just like, you know, you know, share different things that we have. Like I said, we've done giveaways and stuff like that. And, th and th those are great. I know people have come to the channel because of giveaways and stuff like that. But then you also have people like the, I want to give a shout out to, um, Brian Rainey, uh, the, the, the the Missouri geek. Uh, like I said I've interacted with him a ton of time. I said that half geek. Like I said it's probably one of our uh, one of our, our oldest original scribbles that I've interacted with him a, a ton. Um, we have Don the Doctor. Uh, I said he has his channel. Um, I said and I'm gonna put a whole bunch of channels uh, down below this video too of different channels of different people that have subscribed to us that you should check out. Um, I don't know if you guys have any like I said that, uh, off the top of your head that have that have uh, really kind of called out to you. Um, I've got two that I like. I, I would shout out Foil the Plot for doing some awesome unboxing videos and just being a cool person. And then I feel bad because I don't know her name. Um, oh, there it is. Um, shout out to Dork in the Road. Also does uh, awesome unboxings and offered to send me some free dorbs. So thank you. That's yes. a pretty clever handle. I actually really like yeah. it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's awesome. So the billions, oh, I, I, Amy, uh, one of our, honestly, our newest girls too, I, I started kind of getting addicted to, to her channel is uh, Amy McLean. Um, as I said, she does all types of reviews, all types of uh, different things. Uh, I said her channel is like super awesome. So I'm gonna put links uh, down below to kind of everyone we talked about today, along with a couple others too. Uh, Cause I know everyone at the table has like different people that they follow. Uh, as well, like I said, it's just I always want to say thank you tip to everybody out there. Like I said, you know, we still have our our 200 subscriber contest or giveaway going on. Uh, just to remind everyone, that is a signed limited edition uh, Rob Liefeld comic that's actually signed by Rob Liefeld. Um, like I said, we only have 40 more subscribers to go before we, so we give that away. And honestly, like I said we have a couple more giveaways that are that are on tap, ready to go after we give that away. Just because one, we love doing that. Just because like I said it, it really helps us engage the community out there, and it's it's one of those things that I know I, I love doing. Just because it's it's something that when I see someone opening something that 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 we gave away, it's awesome. So I don't know. Like I said I don't know how you guys feel about that. Uh, I completely agree. Yep. Um, I was just looking. We we dr like if you're not checking us out on YouTube, which I think a lot of people are, but if you haven't checked out our channel, um, we've been dropping a lot of stuff lately. Um, we actually did five videos this week. 
Um, you can watch Scott open the October 2017 Loot Crate. Uh, Scott played the new South Park game, The Fractured Butthole, um, that you guys talked about last week without me. Um, I opened a big box of Dorbs. Um, that was fun, so check out what I got. Um, Jeremy opened up the Bam Box for October, oh, the Bam Box Horror, sorry. Um, on Friday, uh, I think he's getting the new Bam Box tomorrow, Monday. So uh, by the time you guys are listening to this, there should be a new unboxing for the brand new Bam Box. Um, and Jeremy also got a really cool Walgreens exclusive Spider-Man pop. Um, the big time suit Spider-Man. Big time suit Spider-Man. So, right, we're doing at least a couple videos a week. This week we kind of killed it with five. Um, so check it out. A lot of unboxings. We're starting the kind of... We probably want to do a separate gaming channel at some point, but for right now, we're, we're dropping some video game uh, videos on the main channel. Yeah, so we'll have uh, Scott uh, also pick up the new Assassin's Creed on Friday. Oh, awesome. Um, so I have that video ready to drop. I, I, I finished editing that late last night. It's just I couldn't, I, I didn't have time to upload it last night because I had some other activities going on. Uh, but we'll have that. Uh, we'll have, um, I bought a case like of, of the Hellboys. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna film that unboxing too, just because I've actually never opened up a factory case of Funkos, so I'm kind yeah, of that'll be cool. To I'm, I'm kind of yeah. anxious to kind of see, kind of like, hey, hey, you want? Know is it? Do they always put it in? You know, like, hey, in, in the chase in the middle, or is it? Yeah. You know, is it in a specific spot? You're trying to get this down to a science. Well, yeah, I just, I just, I just <laughs> want, I want to see, I want to see what's out there. So it's, it's like, so we're gonna continue to drop content. I said, if there's anything that you want to see, um, like I said, from any of us. Let us know. Uh, I know that honestly, even a couple people have like mentioned out. Like I said, we've got a uh, uh, Popcom Spider Man. I believe his his handle. Um, he was he was uh, commenting on uh, your uh, your Schnet Farms uh, video. Oh, video. was like, he? Yeah. So he's like, he's like, "Are you guys from Arizona?" I'm like, "Yeah, we're from Arizona." That's so cool. He's, he was he was talking about that. Yeah. Um, I actually picked up the new South Park just based off Scott's video, and I love it. Yeah. So it's like I said, if you want to see anything, um, you want to interact with us. Um, definitely check us out um, on our YouTube channel, uh, on Instagram at the S at STS Guys, uh, on Facebook at the STS Guys, or on Twitter uh, at STS Guys. Yep, for sure. Um, and I think uh, next week is kind of a big week for us too. Um, Jeremy and Scott are going to be headed to Tucson Comic Con. Yes, so we will be heading down to Tucson Comic Con as uh, as media professionals uh, to cover uh, the con. So we're super excited to cover that and kind of bring some of that to you, uh, just to kind of bring you some of the names that are going to be there. Um, we have Neil Adams, this iconic Batman artist. Um, his son Joel Adams, which um, a lot of people don't know, is that he's actually the artist behind King of the Hill. So like, all the oh King wow, of, yeah, it's along the King That's of the Hill cool. artwork. I said he's going to be there. Um, there's, you know, Brian Polito for that. He was basically like the founder of chaos comics back in the day and the creator of lady death. Um, we have Ming Chen from, from AMC's comic book, man. There's a whole bunch of people that are going to be there. So we're going to try to get some FaceTime with some people. You're burying the lead. Billy D Williams is going to be there. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. I thought Lando gonna, Calrissian Lando's himself gonna is going to be there. So I said, oh, yes, I said, Lando's going to be there as well. So if you happen to be in the Tucson area or Phoenix and want to drive down, um, head over to the Tucson Convention Center next Saturday. Uh, you can party with Jeremy, Scott, and Lando Calrissian. Yeah, so we'll have some some stuff to give out there. Um, we're also going to, uh, kind of spoiler alert, uh, going to be doing a special giveaway for our Tucson Comic Con adventure uh, that's going to be open. Basically, you'll get some extra entries in that contest uh, if you basically are from Tucson. Uh, so we'll go ahead and on that video, so we'll give you a secret keyword to go ahead and say. We'll give that keyword at Comic-Con as well. Um, so that way you can go ahead and check that video out and that contest out as well. Yep, and that's going to be on Instagram. So unlike our other stuff that we've done on YouTube. Um, so make sure you're following us on Instagram, like Jeremy said, uh, at STS Guys. We'll put the, put the link down in the notes. All right. So that brings us to the end of this week's episode. For episode 11, uh, I'm Jeremy. Hey, it's Larry. Nate. And it's Leo. And we are the STS Guys, signing out. Have a good week, everybody.